Lecture 9. The Qualities of an Alphonsian Director. Let us begin with the reading from The Practice of the Love of Jesus Christ by St. Alphonsus de Liguori. St. Paul gives us the marks of true charity and at the same time teaches us the practice of those virtues which are the daughters of charity. And he goes on to say, charity is patient, is kind, charity envies not, deals not perversely, is not puffed up, is not ambitious, seeks not her own, is not provoked to anger, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. In this lecture, I'd like to talk about what qualities should we look for in a spiritual director. Now, although more and more of today's faithful would like to receive the benefits of sound spiritual direction, many feel frustrated in what they perceive is an increasing lack of qualified personnel, the difficulty in finding a good spiritual director is a common complaint among many of those interested in their own self-knowledge on and ongoing spiritual growth. It is often compounded by a tendency among many involved in pastoral ministry to think or to leave this growing demand in the hands of qualified experts. Now, while such an attitude is understandable in the light of current movement in the church toward technology, theological and pastoral specialization, it nevertheless overlooks the great amount of good that can be done in this area by less specially trained pastoral ministers. And the Alphonsian model of direction is particularly suited to such ministers since it is sound, practical, user-friendly, and easy to implement. Although not everyone in ministry should be engaged in the practice of spiritual direction, not everyone needs a long list of credentials in the field. More likely than not, the interested and conscientious pastoral minister can be a good director with but a minimal amount of training and a sensible awareness of his or her own limitations. Most cases of spiritual direction, in fact, do not require the opinion of experts. The relationship between the spiritual director and a directee can bear much fruit even when the directee or the director devotes but a few days a month to developing the art. So let us look at some of the things that a director should, should take into account as he or she embarks on the ministry of spiritual director, direction. First is setting the outer limits. At the very outset, it is important for directors to pinpoint the precise level of commitment that they are willing to make to their initial training, ongoing reading and supervision, frequency of sessions, number of directees, and most importantly, the level of directional competency. Such a commitment should entail a clear idea of the amount of time per month they are willing to devote to the art of spiritual direction and to the number of persons they are willing to have under their care. Overcommitted directors can easily hinder the spiritual growth of those they are ostensibly trying to help. And this level of commitment should be reviewed periodically with the help of a qualified supervisor, perhaps in the context of a support group of spiritual directors that meets on a regular basis to compare notes and to take to talk over specific cases. And prior to taking on any directee, directors should have followed at least three courses in the practice of spiritual direction from a qualified institute. One involving the various models of direction, another involving the Alphonsian model itself, and a third, a supervised practicum. They should also be aware of the various types of direction possible, have access to comprehensive 
bibliography on the methods of direction and also have an extended period of time during which they themselves can have received regular direction from a certified director. It is also advisable for them to have a network of support and referral, which would include a supervised support group, a more experienced mentor willing to help with difficult cases, a counselor or therapist who has worked in the field of spiritual direction, a medical doctor, and lawyers of both civil and canon law. The purpose of such a network would be to ensure easy access to competent help in the event of extreme or complicated cases. Now, in addition to setting these outer limits, we also have to look at the inner limits of spiritual direction. Directors should also have a clear idea about what goes on in direction. These inner limits should define the nature of the relationship between the director and the directee and include a reflective consciousness of the various preconceptions being made about God, human society, the human person, scripture, tradition, suffering, and the like. Directors, in other words, should be concerned with enabling their directees to confront the various anthropological, philosophical, and theological presuppositions they make about human existence. And the limits should also include a clear understanding of the particular model of spiritual direction being undertaken, direct, indirect, various combinations of the two, and be flexible enough to change with the developing needs and expectations of their directees. During this time, spiritual direction itself, the discussion should focus specifically on the correlation between the directee's daily life and the life of prayer. During this time, directors should take spe special care to preserve the dignity of the persons under their care by refusing to impose a particular interpretation of the spiritual life that does not resonate within the heart and mind of the directee. They should also be particularly sensitive to the relationship of the direction should come to an end. The ultimate goal of spiritual direction is to enable directees to become themselves in the faith and to be eventually become more self-directive. In this respect, the director's role in the relationship of spiritual direction should become increasingly less important as a growing independence evolves and takes effect. If such a dynamic does not eventually crystallize, directors should examine more closely the motives behind the continuing relationship and question both themselves and the individual directees about its appropriateness in their current circumstances. Now, having set the inner, the outer and inner limits of spiritual direction, let us now look at some qualities of the Alphonsian director. And there are 15 of them. The Alphonsian director is a man or woman of prayer. Alphonsian directors are experienced in how prayer engages a person on every level of his or her makeup, the physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, communal, knowledgeable of prayer forms in the tradition of the church, vocal, mental, contemplative, communal, and able to discern the particular appropriateness of each for different types of individuals and in various sets of circumstances. Alphonsian directors are open individuals. People can approach them without feeling threatened and can open up to them without the fear of being judged or demeaned in any way. Alphonsian directors are reflective people. They listen to those under their care and reflect back in an organized and orderly manner the various ideas and emotions which they hear. Alphonsian directors are loving individuals. They seek to follow in the footsteps of Christ, who showed his love for us by entering our world in his incarnation, giving of himself completely in his passion and death, becoming nourishment for us in the Eucharist and a source of hope in his resurrection. Alphonsian directors are discreet. It goes without saying that the relationship of spiritual direction is a confidential one. 
It will be successful only if directors create an atmosphere of mutual trust with their directees. That is to say that the directees must be able to be made feel that they can tell their directors absolutely everything that pertains to their spiritual life, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. Alphonsine directors are focused individuals. They have a clear idea of what the relationship of spiritual direction is all about and know how to bring the central issues of each session to the fore. Alphonsian directors are believing Christians, preferably of the same tradition as that of their directees. Spiritual understanding cannot take place in the out of, outside of the context of a particular tradition of faith. Both directors and directees enter into a joint venture of faith-seeking understanding. And while it is certainly possible for the directors and those under their care to come from different faith traditions, the more usual arrangement would be for them to share the same community-shaped values of language, doctrine, and morals. Alphonsine directors are men and women of the scriptures. They hold holy writ in high regard, not merely because of its privileged status in the Christian tradition as the revelation of God's plan for humankind, or because it preserves the record of God's salvific acts on behalf of his people, but because it presents the reader with countless tales of human conversion from sin to new life in the spirit. St. Augustine says, consider scripture for now as the face of God melt in its presence. Scripture is meant to convey an experience of the living God. Alphonsian directors are compassionate. The art of direction takes place on all of the anthropological levels of human existence, the physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, as well as the social. On each of these levels, directors seek to identify with the experience of the persons under their care. Direction, therefore, is not a mere intellectual analysis of how one is praying. It involves the entire human being on every level of his or her existence. Alphonsine directors challenge those under their care. They will be of little help to their directees if they simply reinforce and affirm every thought that surfaces during direction. Alphonsine directors are people of hope. They encourage their directees in prayer, especially during those dark moments of their spiritual journey when they feel lost and without purpose or direction. Alphonsine directors bring perspective. They help their directees to not take themselves too seriously. While directors are careful not to be overly light when the situation demands serious attention, they remain firm in the belief at the, that the ability to laugh at oneself and at one's triumphs and shortcomings is a true sign of one's spiritual health. Alphonsian directors admit their mistakes. When these occur, they are and as they inevitably do, and usually at the outset of one's tenure as a director, they must be faced squarely, dealt with appropriately on both professional and a personal basis, learned from and grown out of. Alphonsian directors are prudent. They help their directees to find sound ways of arriving at the long and short-term goals they have set for themselves in the spiritual life. Ends are one thing. The means of achieving them are quite another. Spiritual directors help their directees first to clarify their goals and then to attain them. And finally, Alphonsian directors are realistic. They understand that spiritual direction plays only a small, albeit important part in a person's life. Not every story will have a happy ending. Some will refuse to grow. Others will not want to be healed. So this list of qualities seeks not only to give a general description of what we should look for in a spiritual director in the Alphonsian tradition, 
but also without pretending to be complete, it may even initially overwhelm some people, those genuinely interested in taking up the practice. Who but an expert could possi possibly possess all of these qualities? Who else could utilize them at the concrete moment for just the right individual? Who else could strike such a proper balance? Now, such responses are understandable. At the same time, the qualities listed here are not the extraordinary domain of experts, but the normal stuff of which many quite ordinary Christians in all walks of life are particularly, and particularly many involved in the pastoral ministry have. The most basic requirement of all good spiritual directors is that they value their faith, have a solid knowledge of it as it relates to the spiritual life, and know how to listen. Let us conclude with some reflection questions. Is spiritual direction a job or a vocation? How would you know if you are being called to this ministry? Is the possibility of becoming a director a topic to bring to spiritual direction itself? Which of these qualities listed do you possess? Which do you lack? What will your strengths and weaknesses be as a director?